So welcome to part two of adding a coolant system on the Little Harbor Freight bandsaw. And in part one, which you should watch first if you haven't, we added the coolant tray to this thing. We added the sump, pump, and fluid line and valve. We still have to add the part that puts it on the blade and several other things. Test run this, work out any unforeseen issues that there may be. I'm sure there'll be some. And, you know, just get it all lined out, right? Finish it up. I'm excited about this. It's an awesome little add-on. So the first thing that I want to take care of is the delivery system that actually puts the coolant on the blade. And I've already pre-assembled some parts. I've got some stuff together. Let me show you what I come up with, and we will install it uh, on the saw. So I believe I got everything worked out for the last portion of the coolant system, what part actually puts the coolant on the blade, and that is a piece of copper quarter-inch tubing with a slot cut in it so it can slide over top of the blade. We have a quarter-inch compression union, stainless steel welded to a little strip of stainless steel with a couple mounting holes in it, and then a piece of blue tubing to run from this unit to the valve. So let's go install this and uh, then work out the rest of the stuff on the saw. So I chose to mount my distributor onto the blade guide here because I want it to move with the saw and I don't want to have to constantly adjust where the coolant's going. I want it to be where it needs to be all the time. So that's why I decided to put it on this piece here because that is adjustable and I won't have to mess with it. So just two little socket head cap screws, little button heads. Drilled straight into the into the uh, blade guide and tapped. So here's the part that's actually going to channel the coolant down to the blade, and that, like I said, just a piece of copper tubing that slides over the blade, just over the the spine of the blade. Does not come down to where the teeth are. We don't want it to rub on on the teeth of the saw, and it just hooks to the to the union like that. So now. It is adjustable with the saw. It puts it right where it needs to go. So we have to have some excess tubing here. I've got a little hose clamp there, a tubing clamp. A little hole that I drilled in the body of the saw. Keep this tubing from flopping around everywhere. There we go. I think that will work pretty good and also looks good. I do say so myself. So the idea with this distributor is that it puts the coolant right where it needs to go. It actually slides over top of the back of the blade and then forces it down onto the spine and onto the teeth of the blade, pushing any chips that are stuck in the teeth out and filling the teeth full of coolant and then that gets carried into the work and the coolant hopefully will will do its job. Instead of just putting the coolant on top of the part and hoping that it gets where it needs to go, I think this is a, a good alternative to that. So sawing produces a ton of chips and within an hour of sawing with this thing you'll have a ball of chips the size of a baseball and we need a quick way, easy way to deal with all that mess. So when I come up with this design I knew that it would be tough to get your hand up in there to, to get those chips out or to clean it out. So what I've decided is that there will be a tray inside here that is removed from the back that you can just dump out because the vast majority of chips are going to fall within this area here. So if we have a tray inside here that's removable that catches the chips. It'll make servicing this pan much, much, much easier. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that worked almost too, too good. I'm glad I stopped and decided to change methods because welding that would have been sketchy. I mean, I'm sure I could have done it, but it would not have been as secure as this. Um, and plus, I'd have probably got to right at the end and then burned a big hole in it. That'd be my luck. What I used is Retro Seal regular paste flux and then this uh, Silver Bright 100 and a heavy duty soldering iron. Made sure everything was really clean. And that's it. There we go. Looks good. Looks better than it would with a bunch of weld beads around the inside. So there's a look at the wire mesh that I'm using. 308 stainless steel, 900 mesh, 900 holes per square inch. Relatively fine, but uh, yet you know, pretty heavy duty, so it should hold up. It's not going to corrode or anything. There's my attempts to weld it to the sheet metal. Uh, same gauge that I'm using for the pan. I tried it and it worked out pretty good, but soldering it was definitely the way to go. No risk of burning holes like that in it. So, worked out well. Itsy, can you sit still? So before we make a cut with a saw, I want to run it with the coolant on just to make sure that it doesn't drip outside of our containment area, outside of the pan, because if it does, I'll have to adjust that. I'm not for sure that it's not going to sling coolant outside of here and drip on the floor or in the back or on the vice. Who knows, really? So let's try that first, and then we'll make a cut. Our test piece will be a 1018 cold rolled 2-inch chunk. So I lost audio on a few of these clips during the first test cuts of this saw. But like I mentioned before, this is just a flow test to make sure that, like you see here, coolant is going to the drain and that when the saw blade's running that it's not dragging a bunch of coolant along with it, spilling out all over the floor. So I was really surprised at how well this thing worked in the horizontal position, which is what I designed the pan around. I didn't give a whole lot of thought to, to running the saw with coolant in the vertical position. And not one drop on the floor. And I thought that potentially it would you know, pull a lot of coolant around and sling it out the front, but this thing only runs 200 surface feet per minute max, and that's just not a very fast band speed. You can see that's max speed. So I did decide, though, that I will extend the pan in the back.
to quite a few cuts. All the mess is, well, the majority of the mess is kept in the pan. So it picked up a new goldenrod oil can to add to the fleet. I like these cans. They're relatively affordable, pretty well made. And I uh, got the one with the wide base this time. To use on the lathe or the milling machine, they're just less likely to tip over. These are fine, but they're not the most stable. This is much better. This one also came pre-dented, which saves me the trouble. So even though the test cuts on this saw went really well, at least they did in the in the horizontal position because that's all I did. I didn't give a lot of thought to using flood coolant in the vertical position. It just would take a, you know, a huge pan in order to keep from making a big mess. What I did notice is that there was a lot of chip buildup towards the back of this saw that I did not expect. So I decided to extend the back of this thing and make it a little bigger to hold some chips if you don't want to clean it out every every week. to keep this pump in here from sucking up a bunch of these filings from the sawing process they're just going to get down through here into the into the tank you can put a screen here and i'll probably do that but you're still going to get stuff that falls down in there and what i've decided to do is use the same type of filter that i use on my surface grinder it works great it's just a sock filter you can buy these from mcmaster and all sorts of different meshes this is a smaller one it should fit down in the tank and what goes down into this return hole and out of the hose into the tank will first go into this sock. It'll filter out all of the, all the chips. 
when this gets dirty and it's time to change out the coolant, you just pull this out and hose it out and reuse it. It's worked great so far in the surface grinder, and I don't see any reason why it won't work in this scenario as well. So at work we have a large Kalamazoo horizontal saw and it's got a really big pan on it but I still run into situations, especially cutting pipe, where it runs off the part onto the floor. Usually we'll take a bucket and set under it or something like that, but for this, in the situation where you're cutting something long, longer than the pan will cover, you just take something like this and uh, stick it in there and that will divert any coolant that runs off of the end of the part back into the tray and into the system. You know, just a quick fix to a potential problem that may someday exist. So that was a fun little project. Let's wrap it up and give you my closing thoughts on, uh, on what I've done here. So works great in the horizontal position, doesn't leak a drop, keeps your parts cool, make your blades last longer, give you a better surface finish, contains all the chips that otherwise with this saw ended up on the floor. The only downfall to this is that in order to have a really leak-proof system in the vertical position, it would have to be much bigger. Now you can run this saw in the vertical position with coolant on it, and this pan contains it all, but anytime you're gonna cut something large, you could expect it to run right off the part onto, onto the floor. So, you know, it, that is what it is, and you could make your system as big as you wanted. But my use for this saw is in, primarily anyway, is in the horizontal. So not a large coolant system, or not a large amount of, co amount of coolant, so when that time comes to change it, there's just not that much to deal with. It's a pretty minimalist system here, so, and it doesn't sling coolant like I thought that it would, so that's a good thing. So that's it, I think. I'm glad I done it. It was a fun little project, and if you want to do something like this for yourself, you will have a better insight in, uh, in what to expect. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, and anybody who's helped me out what's in any way whatsoever. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly so as the light Leaves your eyes Hold on to your dream Oh, I know you wanna scream Since the day you're born You're just a flower on your own Waiting for the sun to blossom Through the storm